Welcome back to the Insane Asylum. This is your host, Commander Asylum of the Initiative, and welcome back to part two of my carrier writing video. In this part of the video, I'm going to go ahead and do a couple sites so that you can see the flow of what carrier writing is like. So, here I am in one of my writing systems. I have my carrier aligned to the anomaly that I want to go to. Okay, so I have three accounts open right now. One account obviously is my carrier account. Um, my second account is a cloaky scout that also has probe scanners. The purpose the probe scanners is to make sure we don't have any wormholes in this system and any new anomalies that spawn I can scan them down to make sure that they're not wormholes. I do not rat in a system that has wormholes in it. Does that mean you can have some nasty surprises um, being in a capital ship? Uh, you know, some scary things coming through the wormholes. My third account is my emergency Sino. So I can do two things with the emergency Sino. I can have them here in the system with me so that if the rescue fleet is going to come rescue me, they can Sino right to me and uh, with my emergency Sino. Or I can move them over to another system where there is a station that I can tether to or dock up to. All right. Okay, so I've been aligning now. It's about a 30 second align time on this ship. And everything you do in these capital ships has to be slow and deliberate. So I didn't want to hit warp and with a 30 second align time and have some neutral jump into the system. And then, uh, you know, I'm stuck in this warp animation and it takes forever to land. Instead, I'll make sure I'm absolutely ready to commit to this site before I hit warp. But so I don't spend forever aligning, I'll go ahead and pre align here. Okay, some of the things I check before I warp to my site is I check local, it's clear, I check intelligence, it is clear, I look over at my scout, I look at the site, and what I'm worried about is if I warp to this site, I want to make sure that there's no dreadnoughts there or something nasty, or there's you know, someone else that's already riding there. So right now the site is clear and there are no dreadnoughts, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and do this warp. So I like warping to my scout. I have him pre-staged there, so I know exactly where I'm warping to in this, and I want to warp outside of 70 kilometers, because if a Dreadnought does spawn, they can tackle you with a warp disruption module all the way out to 70 kilometers, so I want to make sure I'm outside of that range. At all times, in case a Dreadnought does spawn, he cannot tackle me, and I can survive, you know, however many times he's going to hit me before I warp off. Okay. Alright, everything looks clear so here we go so Let's initiate drive. warp Active. okay now that I'm in warp Let's to my drive. scout I'm gonna go ahead and back my scout out and send them to the next site that way I can go from site to site so he's gonna go and start scouting the next anomaly that I want to do Okay, so I'm doing havens, and havens have pretty good ticks, but they also spawn really good escalations. So you can make some pretty good is. Like I said in my first video, I can make about 220 million sustained isk per hour doing this, as long as I go from site to site, and I don't get disrupted very often by small gangs coming through. Of course, if there's a small gang here or anyone right near here, I'm not going to be out here riding. I'll duck up or I'll go move somewhere else to rat. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to align to my insta tether. Now you can do a safe or you can do an insta tether. In this case, I'm just going to use an insta tether. So I land, I'm going to start my align, drop my mobile tractor unit, and deploy my fighters. Okay, so now that I'm aligning, deploy my drones drop my MTU. So one thing to notice is I got these halos around my ship and these fighters. So these halos are who I'm controlling. So these fighters you control just like you control uh, your own ship. So if I issue a command, it's going to give that command to all three of my fighter squadrons and my ship. So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to hold control and click on my ship status panel here and it's going to deselect my ships. Now now any navigational commands I give are going to go to my fighters. So let's go ahead and send the fighters in. 
So I'm going to hold W, which is the hotkey for orbit, and I'm going to click on one of these bad guys that I want to kill. Also, since I don't want to lose my mobile tractor unit, let's go ahead and save that position. Okay, now it's saved, so I'm not going to lose that. Alright, now that the fighters are going in, let's go ahead and start targeting these guys. Just targeting everybody. Okay, now that I'm aligned out, I'm going to go ahead and slow down a little bit so I don't drive away too fast from the anomaly. Okay, now that these things are targeted, I'm going to go ahead and attack them. So I have commands. So I have three fighter squadrons, and I have three commands I can give each of these fighter squadrons. Now this hockey is F1. Okay, now you look here. This guy's taking damage, so I'm going to have to pull him back. So I'm going to bring him back to my launch tube. See, he's taking damage there. So that he doesn't die, I'm going to hit his MWD so he gets back here really fast. Now I have to select the other two, and they're going to keep on killing these guys. Now that this guy's returned to his launch tube, he's going to refuel and restock his weapons. Now I can launch him again. And now this guy's taking damage, so let's go ahead and recall him. Select the other two, and attack. Okay, each of these fighters has three modules that they can use. There's a, just a regular standard weapon they can use. They have a micro warp drive that can be used, and they have these heavy hitting weapons that are really good against battleships. And but they're limited in ammunition. So what I'm doing is I'm actually giving navigational commands like I would like if I was just in my you know, giving commands to my own ships by holding W and then clicking on the target. I am going to go ahead and orbit them. So that's it. But instead of me orbiting them, my fighters are going to do the orbiting. And then my hotkeys are assigned F1, F2, and F3. So I just hit F1. And since I have all three fighter squadrons selected, it's going to use my main weapons on all of them. So let's go ahead and orbit this battle cruiser. Hit F1 to turn on the guns. This guy's slow boating back. So what I can do with him is that's squadron one. I can hit the MWD and he's going to get back there a heck of a lot faster. Now that does run a risk. When I MWD towards them, if they do decide to target this guy and start burning him down really fast, he's already used up his micro warp drive. So if I have to return to launch tube, it's going to take him forever to do that and I can lose a couple of these fighters while they're doing it. These fighters are Tech 2 fighters. They're about 20 to 30 million apiece. So I do not like losing them. Okay, we're kind of stabilized out here now, so I'm checking intels, nothing really concerning me there. No one's in... No one's coming to local yet. So one thing you gotta do is, if you don't issue any navigational commands to your fighters, they'll just sit there. And that makes them easy targets for anything there. So you've always got to keep them moving. So even though I didn't have anything targeted, I told them to go ahead and orbit one of the guys there that I was going to work on targeting. That way if they did get attacked by anything, they wouldn't just get insta-deleted. Okay, now that I'm finding frigates, um, you know, I didn't have all my spinnies on. I normally have all my spinnies on. These are my tracking modules. Uh, having these tracking modules allows my fighters to track frigates and destroyers and cruisers. If I didn't have those on, I'd have a much more difficult time killing these frigates with my fighters. So in this case, I got three of them. I'm spinning three of them, and uh, they pretty much just delete these fighters. Or sorry, they delete these frigates with my fighters. So meanwhile, I'm still aligned out, so if anybody does come in that surprises me, Say some, you know, I'm not paying attention to intel, or I miss something getting called on intel. I think it's surprised by someone popping in here, and they can pop up my local. Um, I don't have to spend 30 minutes, 30 seconds aligning out of the site. I'm already aligned out, so I can just instantly warp out of here. So as long as I do this, it makes me extremely, extremely difficult to catch. You could still get caught, especially if you're not paying full attention. But it's pretty difficult. Okay, so it's a new wave, so I'm going to go ahead and tell them to orbit something so they don't get deleted. Meanwhile, I'm going to target these guys. I'm still aligned out. 
My fighters are moving, so they're hard to hit. You can see, they uh, destroy these battleships pretty fast, so I got two different weapon systems I'm using. I have my normal guns, which will take a few seconds to burn down. Uh, probably about 10 seconds to burn down a battleship, but I can almost just delete them by using these heavy weapons on them. Now as you use these heavy weapons it takes the reload time like when you bring when you do bring them back into your uh, launch tube um, the more of these heavy weapons you've used the longer it takes them to refuel so I, I like to pace myself as I go through these so that they last the entire site I'm kind of going through them a little bit fast but uh, you know, if you pace yourself, then you won't have to bring these guys back unless they actually start taking damage from one of the one of the rats. So I just I continue burning these guys down here. I'm staying aligned out. I don't have my ship selected, so any navigational commands that I give are not going to go to me. They're going to go to my fighter squadrons that are selected. Here's a fighter squadron taking damage. I'm going to go ahead and risk this now and keep an eye on it. See if he takes any more damage. His micro warp drive is still ready to be activated. So I can get him back to my launch tube pretty fast. I, I do run the risk of him dying if, I'm, if I stop paying attention to him. And uh, that can be a pretty expensive loss if that does happen. So some of the most dangerous things for your fighters are going to be frigates and cruisers. And uh, the battle cruisers to a lesser extent. Uh, we've only had frigates so far and they've all come to attack me. They haven't really attacked my fighters yet. So, but some later, some of the uh, later spawns here, you're going to see the cruisers spawn and not only do the fighters have somewhat of a difficult time attacking them, they're actually pretty tanky. So, and they can do some pretty good damage to my fighters. So I'm going to have to burn them down as fast as I can when they do spawn. There they are. Okay, there we go. So I'm keeping an eye on this guy's health here. If he starts to take more damage, I'm going to go ahead and recall him to his launch tube. And I'm going to use the micro warp drive to get him back here before he dies. That's the only reason I'm keeping him out there is because that micro warp drive is is just ready to fire off and get him back here as fast as possible. If I didn't have it, then I'd already have him coming back because if I saw that he took more damage with his bar turns orange, I would not have enough time to get him back to the launch tube before he dies. Just because it takes so long for him to get back. I'm so far away from the site. It takes him so long to get back that he would likely die. See, I'm just erasing these uh, cruisers, getting them off the field here as fast as possible. So as you can see, I'm still watching Intel. I'm watching local chat. I have my probe scanner window up so I see if any other anomalies spawn. And then if they do, I'll scan them down with one of my alts that's out here with me. So as you can see, this is uh, somewhat like playing a piano. There's a lot of clicking. A lot of clicking on my keyboard, a lot of clicking on the computer. Okay, this is the big wave. And if there was a dreadnought that was going to spawn, it would have been right now. So no dreadnought spawn. So I'm safe to go ahead and continue clearing this, but i got to really watch my fighters here now. Because they can get killed really fast with all these battle cruisers. So I target the battle cruisers first, because if anyone's going to kill my fighters, it's going to be them. 
So I'm going to burn them down first. As fast as possible. As you can see, these fighters tear through them pretty fast. Pretty much insta-kill them. Oh, so he's taking damage now, so I'm going to... Recall to launch tube. Turn on the MWD to get him back here as soon as possible. Get back here, get back here, get back here. Select my other fighters. I'm going to keep them in the action and fighting. So I deselected this guy after I told him to come back to launch tube. And here he comes. I'll give him the other two out. We're going to keep fighting. All right. So now that I've used so many of the heavy weapons, it's going to take a lot longer for this guy to refuel than it did earlier. And he saw that I recalled him earlier. He refueled in a matter of just a few seconds. I was able to get him back out. But now he's going to take 30 seconds to a minute. He's going to take a while. But that's better than uh, losing a 20 or 30 million dollar, I'm sorry, 30 million isk fighter. Okay, this guy's taking damage now, so I'm keeping an eye on him. Okay, he's ready, so I'm going to go ahead and launch him. He's head down, so I'm going to actually take a risk here. I'm going to turn on his micro warp drive to get him there faster so I can clear this site. So that's a risk that he can get targeted again before that micro warp drive's cooldown timer is done. And if that happens, he's probably going to die. Okay, someone's new is in the system, but it is a blue, so I'm not too worried. Okay, now this guy's micro warp drive is on cooldown. But he's not taking damage. I think I'm fine. So that was a risk. That was well worth it. Okay, so now I'm going to start unlining to the next anomaly. Let's go ahead and get my scout over there. It's BRN. So it's clear. Intel's clear. Local's clear. So I'm going to go ahead and change my alignment now. So here I'm going to go site to site as I do this. So I'm no longer going towards my bail spot. So this is one of the most dangerous times right here is as I re-change my alignment because I can no longer instantly warp out. Let's go ahead and finish this site. The next site is clear. Nothing even spawned yet, and my scout is in position. Okay, this site is now clear. Let's go ahead and recall these guys, turn on the MWD. Site's clear, intel's clear, local's clear. I am good to start warp as soon as these fighters are back. Again, I'm pre-positioned with my scout, so I'm going to go ahead and jump to him. Warp drive active. This will be the same routine, so I'm going to go ahead and align to my build spot, which in this case will be a tether and a station. I'm going to pre-align to that. I am going to drop my mobile tractor unit, and I'm going to deploy my fighters and send them on their way. And I'm going to do the same thing again. So you can see this thing is slow to warp. So why I had to check intel to make sure there was no one just one or two gates away that might come through here and ruin my day. Intel's clear, local's clear, so pretty safe doing this. But this is a couple minutes. This is, if you know, if I'm going to die, it's going to be in this now or the past couple minutes as I changed my alignment. I was in warp to this site, and I'm now going to align to my escape point here. Okay, there's the align, mobile tractor unit, send my drones out. Nothing spawned yet, so but I can do Q clicks for my drones. Make sure I'm not selected because I don't want to drive myself. I want to align to tether. The only things that are selected are my fighters. Okay. Well, I'm waiting for those to spawn. Go ahead and name a bookmark for that mobile depot. And there they are. Target and kill. 
Again, it's those battle cruisers again that uh, they can be pretty tough on my fighters. So let's go ahead and get them taken care of now. I want to slow myself down, so I'm aligning, but I'm going to slow myself down. Still going fast enough to be able to insta warp out. But slowing myself down so I don't drive away too fast from this site. Alright, so I'm going to take the battle cruisers out. See, now I accidentally double clicked off of. I was trying to click on a target to orbit them, and I accidentally double clicked in space behind the target thing. So that realigned my ship away from my tether point. So you gotta watch out for that. If you're not paying attention and you accidentally click outside of the target and you realign yourself, some enemy could jump into the system and you will not be aligned out to your safe point, which uh, makes you very, very vulnerable. Because one of the best parts about carrier riding is you can do all this while aligned out so that you can instantly warp out of danger. That's one of the strengths of this, but if you're not paying attention and you do that like I just did and you don't catch it, then, then you can end up dead because it could, it could take you a minute or longer to change your alignment back to where uh, your escape is. So you're going to watch me pace my heavy weapons here. I want to make sure they last the entire anomaly. Let's go ahead and get these fire, I guess these frigates now. Keeping an eye on their health, keeping an eye on intel. There's an update on intel, but this person's really far away. Now, since I don't have this entire map memorized in this area, one thing I can do is as Intel pops up, I can go ahead and set destination to the place reported in Intel and see how many jumps away it is. That gives me, if I don't immediately recognize the place that was called out in Intel, I can just do that to have a feel for how far away this person is from me. That's called out in it. It's called out. So again, I'm still pretty safe because I'm I'm fighting while aligned out. So. Unlike a Dreadnought where you have a five minute Bastion timer, or five minute Siege timer, uh, you gotta really plan that stuff out. Um, I can let Newts get quite a bit closer to me without breaking a sweat. Okay, here comes the next spawn. Keep my fighters in motion so they don't get flat. I guess if you look at my modules, you might notice I got this thing here. This is the network sensor array. I rarely use this. And what this does is it allows you to target these guys much, much faster. As you can see, it's not taking me too long to target them in the first place, though. I'm only losing a few seconds per site um, on targeting these guys, so I'm not really losing a lot by not using it. But what that'll do is it'll also anchor me here. I will not be able to warp out of this site if I activate it. And that's going to last for a whole minute. So you could use it, and you could probably shave off a minute off of each site by doing that and increase your income probably by about 5%, but you also incur significant additional risk for doing that. Okay, I kind of messed up my priorities here a little bit. I ignored these frigates. They're getting really close to me. Now these frigates here, these are the agents and the spies and the scouts. They actually, they actually tackle you. So I'm gonna get my fighters in here as fast as possible to to kill these guys. I should have, I should have sent my fighters there much, you know, while they were back up here with a with a spawn location and killed them there instead of waiting for them to get this close to me. As you can see, my fighters are gonna kill them pretty fast. Just gotta make sure I keep my fighters in motion. Now my fighters are pretty far away from this battleship. Now if I wanted to maximize my ISK and take some additional risk, I could hit my micro warp drive here and get them back there really, really fast. 
But, you know, this is only going to take an additional 5 or 10 seconds for them to slow boat back and start attacking this battleship. So I'm not going to wait. I'm going to save this micro warp drive in case one of these guys gets targeted. I can get them back to my launch tube as soon as possible. So one of my fighters is taking damage now, so I'm going to keep an eye on that guy. Okay, let's not make the same mistake now. I'm going to kill these frigates while they're all the way up there. I'm not worried as much about these guys, because they're not going to tackle me like the other ones are. But still, I like to kill them while they're up there. My fighters have to spend time, less time flying back and forth. Less time them flying back and forth is more isk in my pocket. So as you can see, this is uh, this is actually a very active process. It's not passive at all. This is probably the most clicking that you would have to do while riding. It's a, it's a lot of fun though. I really I really enjoy this. But you know, it's almost the opposite of an Iskhtar riding. With the Iskhtar, the drones just take care of everything. If you set them to aggress, then they just fly around and kill anything that attacks you. So you could probably take a nap while Iskhtar riding and wake up and have a site cleared. But you can't do that with the carrier, right? You have to micromanage your fighters. Don't micromanage your fighters. You're gonna, you know, if you took a nap or went to go get lunch or something, like you could with an Istar while it's riding, you're gonna come back and have all your fighters dead, and you're, you might even be dead. So, I got a few more spawns here before I clear this site. Here's the cruiser spawn. This is one that worries me because those cruisers can kill my fighters pretty fast. Cruisers. Got some new on Intel, but they're pretty far away. So this is definitely not like you just sit back and chill and let let your fighters do all the work. Because the fighters don't do any work that you don't do for them. But they're extremely powerful. They put out significant damage. I'm doing almost 3,300 DPS in this ship. And since these are fighters I'm using, I've actually selected the ammunition to be to shoot right into the resist hole of these Serpentus rats, which is kinetic. So I'm using kinetic fighters. To maximize my damage output here. As you can see, I, I kill these battleships really fast. You know, I'm also making sure it's, that I stay aligned, that I didn't accidentally click out in space and change my direction. Locals clear, Intel's got some new reports, but they're pretty far away. Okay, oh, there's a dreadnought. Okay, dreadnought. That means I gotta go to tether. Oh, so this is why I stay outside of 70 kilometers, because otherwise I'd be tackled right now. So I'm gonna do that. Warp to insta tether. And GTFO. So I saw that. There's the dreadnought right there. So that dreadnought spawn. They're gonna spawn on that last. On that last. Uh, wave. So I just got out of there. I still got my MTU back there. It's bookmarked. I'll probably send in a uh, Nereus or some other hauling ship to collect that later and uh, just try to get out with my loot. Um, I'm not going to be able to clear this site, which means 
I'm not gonna be able to get an escalation from it, but you know, that's you know, that's uh right, that's just the way the dice rolled for this time. Um, you don't really get dreadnoughts that often. I maybe get one dreadnought every few hours of writing. So it's actually pretty fortuitous that you, you know you get to see that in here. So well, anyways, that is uh two sites cleared so you can see what it's like to carry a rat and see if that's for you and something you might want to pursue. Um, you know, uh, hopefully, you know, if it, you don't, you realize it's something you don't like, I mean, hopefully saved you like six months of training time to get all those capital skills done. So, but, uh, you know, you know what you're getting into now when you start that training process. Uh, please uh, like and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, drop it in the comments section below and I will do my best to respond and I will see you next time. And until then, fly dangerous.